familiar with a few of the businesses here, which is great. That's excellent. Um, just by a show of hands, does everybody sort of have a social media platform or do some social media for their business currently? Just as most people. Fantastic. Excellent. Very good. To add a little bit of context, so as Steph mentioned, uh, we're from Attention Media, so we're an agency based over in Shepparton. Uh, we're about six and a half years old, and we have a team of six full-time staff currently, and we work with a range of different businesses from the local cafe in Shepparton to some larger multinational companies all around Australia. So there's a fair bit of uh, width and depth to the types of clients that we work with, uh, but the idea today is obviously just to try and um, keep things simple with social media. I mean, even for us, it can be an extremely complex and ever-changing landscape. So even you know, for us working in it day in and day out, it can be quite a challenge to keep up with things. It's always changing, it's always evolving. But then there's also social media, which obviously lends itself to giving us a lot more control as you know, the business owner or the brand owner. Um, so one of the main things with social media is that we can put a strategy forward, we can get content out, we can let people know who we are, what we're about, what we offer, and we have complete control over that. So one of the main things with social media, we can use it to build brand awareness, so we can help to get the word out. Obviously, it can help us to generate leads and or sales. We can use our social platforms to drive traffic through to our websites, improve customer service. Uh, you know, a lot of the times people ask questions through social media, they might jump onto Facebook, they might send you a DM, you might have uh, a chat set up through Messenger. So the next couple of slides, just to add a little bit of context to the social media usage in Australia. So these stats are from January this year. And you can see that obviously Facebook and Instagram are the most popular, they're the most used platforms. And I think sometimes, correct me if I'm wrong, but deciding on which social media platform to use or you know, where should we be spending our time can often be a, a bit of a, a juggle as well, a bit of a task. Um, but in terms of where, you know, where should we start, where are we going to get the most reach? For most people, you know, we all have a Facebook page, Facebook account and an Instagram account. So that's definitely one of the best places to start because we're going to reach the most people there. You can see obviously we've got TikTok, we've got WhatsApp, Snapchat, it goes further on down the list, but that gives you a bit of an idea of statistically how many people are on different social media platforms. So social media users, obviously, you know, the majority of the Australian population at this stage has all uses social media. We can see some other statistics there just around the average time that people spend on social media. Uh, two hours and four minutes per day. Uh, does anybody feel like they would be using social media more than that in a day? No? <laughs> is, any, does, is anybody utilising the, um, the, the time tracker on the iPhone that sort of shows you how long you've been? Yeah, it scares you. Yes, exactly. Um, very much the case. Very much the case. Um, any other questions based on that info there? Does that, is there anything there that sort of surprises people? Good. Good. It's all fairly straightforward. But uh, again, it just sort of gives you an overview of um, right. you know, what's possible with social media too. How many people are using the platform? How long are they using it for? The next slide, main reasons for using social media. So again, this one here, I think one of the, especially when it comes to business, when we're using social media, the challenge can be that we want to you know, put a post out onto Instagram and we want people to buy our product or service. Like most of the time, that's obviously the outcome that we're looking for. However, as you can see, the top few results there when people, and you know, we can all relate to this, when we do open up Facebook at night, when we do have a look on Instagram, we're not opening up those apps to you know, initially buy a product. So the usage is very much checking with family and friends, finding some fun content, um, you know, business owners as brand owners, when we're posting social media, if we're just posting with the intention to try and sell and or you know, get some form of information straight off the bat, there's just a bit of a disconnect there with what we're all actually using social media for in the first place. So that then comes down to well, what types of content can we create and or what's our strategy when we are posting onto social media. And one of the really simple ways to overcome that problem is to think about the 80-20 rule for posting our content. If we have 
80% of our content, roughly, that is um, value driven. We're providing some information, we're providing some value, we're trying to entertain people. Then 20% of the content is more call to action, sales, this is what we have to offer, you know, book in with us, we'd love to have you stay here, et cetera, and so forth. So that sort of 80-20 rule creates a nice balance and it's a little bit different for everybody and it's not exact science, but it just gives you a bit of an understanding of what we can post and then how much to have in terms of sales driven content. Does that sort of make sense? TikTok's exploded in terms of its popularity and its reach worldwide and Instagram's trying to keep up with that. And then obviously what that means is Instagram as the app, if you post a, a photo as opposed to a reel or some short form video, typically speaking, you won't get as much organic reach because Instagram wants you to post videos because they want people to be using Instagram like they use TikTok. Does that make sense? So internally, the algorithm will naturally, generally give you a little bit more organic reach, show it to a few more people because that's the type of content they want people to be posting. Mm. So when it comes to, and that can be the difficult thing because then it means well, we've got to create some video content. How do we create some video content? I don't really want to get in front of the camera, etc., and so forth. However, you can ask a question. Sorry, do you think that TikTok and Instagram have different audiences? Though? For sure, for sure, they do. They have different audiences, but at the same time, you do have crossover. So, you know, obviously, you know, for myself personally, I have a Facebook account, Instagram account, TikTok account, and there'll be a lot of people that do that. One of the things is, though, to keep in mind that the psychology on different platforms, people are using the platform for different things. The reason that you go to Instagram is much different to the reason you go to LinkedIn. It's a different type of audience. There's generally different types of content. You know, if you're using Instagram, it's let's catch up family and friends. Uh, you know, let's look at, um, you know, search up the nest, see what they're doing on the weekend. Inst uh, LinkedIn is very much business related content. You know, it's, it's the professional network as they've always called it. Um, same thing with Instagram and TikTok. There's different audiences, but there's still crossover. And because TikTok's exploded and their user base is so big now, there's a lot of the time you'll get the same sort of people with Instagram accounts have a TikTok account. But it is, it's, there's nuances, there's slight, you know, people, some people love Instagram and they hate TikTok and then the other way around, but there will be a little bit of crossover. Just depends on, and especially in Australia as well, obviously it's, it's been very popular and its user base has increased significantly. So it's a case of testing different types of content. And I think the, again, trying to keep social media simple, like it's, it can be such a, even for us, it's like, what do we post? How often do we post? all that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, if we keep things nice and simple and we know that TikTok is all vertical short form video, that's the type of content we post there. Instagram also wants to be that short form vertical video platform as well. So it's posting the similar types of content on both platforms, um, see what works best. You, know, you will get a bit of a sense of the types of content on TikTok that gets a lot more views. Sometimes TikTok can be uh, pretty random where you'll get this huge spike of views and it's you know, a new platform and they give organic reach a little bit more freely. Um, but just looking at the numbers, just seeing what works, what's getting more organic reach and then continuing to sort of double down on that type of content. Does that sort of make sense for people? Does that help? Um, so in Facebook obviously has reels as well. You'll, you'll notice there, there's a bit of a theme with all those different types of content. What's, what's the theme that kind of repeats itself? It's the, it's the short form video is predominantly the most popular on most of these platforms now. Um, when it comes to the short form video though, one of the things, again, keeping it really, really simple, is that we don't have to be filming, you know, one, two, three, four minute videos facing the camera and talking to the camera. Some of the types of content that works really well nowadays is six second, like really short six second videos of whatever you're doing either in your business or your day to day, it's just showing something that you're up to that's interesting. Uh, and a lot of the times as a business owner, we think, oh, you know, that's not interesting. What I do is not interesting. Nobody really cares about that part of what we do or what we offer. Um, but at the end of the day, that's not quite correct. Like, we, you know, people will be interested in what you have to offer. Um, so even just really short, concise, six second videos and doing that means it's a little bit more repeatable 
You're not having to think of, oh, what can I talk about for 60 seconds and then what do I post? Just short, really short um, videos with a little bit of information in the caption, a little bit of extra context, and that can work quite well because you can do that a little bit more easily, a little bit more repeatedly um, to get more posts out more often. So keeping it simple, um, educational, entertaining, provide some value and do that on a regular basis. The main thing with social media these days is consistency. So when we look at um, you know, a posting schedule, for example, if we post once per week, um, let's say it's four posts per, per month, that there's nothing wrong with that. The volume that you post or the amount that you post is then correlated to how many people you will reach, how many people will see your content. So the amount of you know, engagement that you want to get, the amount of um, you know, DMs that you want people to be you know, contacting you, like that's all based on the amount of times that you post, but consistency is the main thing these days. So finding a posting schedule, whether it's three times per week, whether it's every day, but just being consistent with that. So finding something that works for you, works in your schedule, you know that I can do that, I can be consistent. It's a case of, again, thinking back to the platforms as a business, they will look favorably on your account if you're posting consistently because they then know that, oh, hey, they're providing some content on a regular basis, people are enjoying that content, they're engaging with it, so we'll continue to give them a little bit more organic reach because they are being consistent. It's not ad hoc, it's not one post you know, at the start of the month and then nothing for three weeks and then another post later on down the track. Because there's no consistency there, the algorithm's not likely to recommend your account or give you a lot of organic reach because there's just not a lot happening. Does that kind of make sense? So it's a, it's a consistency game. It's like, um, it's like a, sh uh, a show on Netflix or a TV series. You know, a new episode drops every week or on a consistent basis because people can then expect that and they can come back and they can consume it. If it was just ad hoc and all over the place, it's very hard for people to either remember it's on or you know, really get into it because there's just not a lot happening. It's too sporadic, if that makes sense. So short form video, definitely the, uh, the type of content that performs best over most platforms, but it's always a case of test and try. Um, and different businesses obviously have different audiences. So it is a case of seeing what works for you. Um, any thoughts or questions on that in terms of content? Yes. I've got one. Um, sorry. Very well. yeah. how, how fancy do you think the video content needs to be? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. produced? Yes. Two, two parts to answering that question. One, um, what ties in with your brand and your brand image? Um, you know, are we a professional services lawyer accounting firm or are we a local store, cafe, um, and either either can be professional content or raw and natural. The main thing though is that generally speaking on social media these days, people want raw and authentic, like natural looking content. They don't want highly polished, um, you know, professional looking content because subconsciously we think, oh, ad, advertisement, they've spent a lot of money, they're trying to sell us something. So again, in the context of trying to keep things simple, not having to have things highly produced um, it works well on social media where it is just the camera using our iPhones, our smartphones, just recording on that. You can make it as polished or as professional as it needs to be for your business or your brand, but not to the detriment of only being able to do it once a month because that's all you've got time for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that sort of answer the question? So raw and natural and everybody, you know, I'm sure everybody resonates with this, but the more authentic the content is or the more authentic the person is that you're talking to, the more you relate to them. Like it just feels natural. If somebody's standing there and they're trying to sell you something off the bat and you don't really know them, then it doesn't really work too well. It doesn't come across naturally. So keeping it nice and simple, raw and natural, and then just testing different, different types of content to see what works. Hashtags for Instagram were the core of the platform, right? But can I ask a question? Who has been on Instagram in the last however long and typed in a hashtag to search for something? One, two, maybe? Generation. A, a little bit, a little bit. So sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. It, the with the platforms itself nowadays, because there is so much more machine learning and artificial intelligence built into the platform, the algorithm can read the caption that you put in. 
So it can, it can read what you type in as the caption. It can also nowadays uh, look at the content in your video or your picture and also determine what that is too. So the dependency of the platform, it was used to be originally, you can still do it, 30 hashtags per post. The reason the hashtags were there is because that gave context to the algorithm. If it was somebody putting up a bunch of flowers and we're typing in florist, you know, chrysanthemums, whatever it is, that was telling the algorithm what that post was actually about so that it could recommend it to people. But nowadays, it doesn't need the hashtags to know what the post is about. And oftentimes, the platform um, doesn't like a lot of hashtags because it looks a little bit spammy, it looks a little bit messy, uh, it's a little bit salesy, so they're pushing away from hashtags a lot more, uh, particularly on Facebook. Facebook reads the captions, you don't need to add hashtags in. Hashtags these days, um, and again, test and try, everybody's accounts are different, everybody's brand's different. Using hashtags as a brand awareness recognition strategy is like more important. Um, so using your brand name as a hashtag because that's very valuable because then all of your, you can search for your hashtag, your business name, whatever it is, and all of your posts will show up. So from that point of view, it can be very effective, but you know, gone are the days with two, three, four years ago, we wanted to maximize the amount of hashtags we had in our post because the algorithm just doesn't rely on that anymore. Does that make sense? So it's more of a, again, we always say test and measure because Every business is different, every brand is different, but yeah, the reliance on hashtags isn't what it used to be. So it's much more around if you've got a particular branded hashtag or a particular, um, you know, there might be a particular event that your business is involved in and there's a hashtag to that event. Obviously, definitely use that because then you'll show up in all that other content that relates to that event or that organization or whatever it might be. Um, but just sort of stuffing our posts with hashtags is, is not required anymore. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, Answer the question. Say the cost one you about sound or assisted at learning to the run. Yes, yep. Um, trying to reach veterans, such as uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. disabilities. Yes. Like a huge audience that can benefit from our speakers. Of course. It's, it's take. Yes. So I thought I'd use the hashtag idea. Yep. I don't know. It's going to work. Look, test it, try it, but also if you use those keywords in your caption. So as you're writing out your post caption, you've got all those words in there anyway. The algorithm's reading that anyway. So you, you're covering it off in that aspect, but there's nothing wrong with also including the hashtags if you want to. Try, try a number of posts with either and see what happens. See what the reach is like. Perfect. The next couple of slides, again, are just really simple suggestions on how we can utilize that short form video content and how we can create it. So make it entertaining, uh, which obviously means we all need to be dancing in our uh, videos or singing or rapping or doing something like that. Uh, no, definitely not. It's, um, it's just about being, I think at the end of the day, being authentic. So, you know, people, <clears throat> people want to connect and watch uh, content from people who are being authentic and being their true selves. Um, you will be entertaining in your own way, so do you. Make it digestible, so again, makes it easier for us. We can keep it short, we can keep it simple. Um, generally, best rule of thumb is each piece of content that you create, just focus on one topic or one theme or one idea, um, rather than trying to add multiple things into one video because it'll just make it more digestible. It'll also help you to create more content more often if you just stick with one idea, one topic per piece of video. So it allows you to create more um, and obviously make it relatable. Then on the next slide, uh, creative considerations. So capturing attention in the first three seconds. This is a fairly important one for two reasons. Our, our attention span is obviously very, very short. We're on social media. If we don't, if something doesn't catch our eye straight away, we all just scroll past it. Um, if we think that it's an ad or some kind of you know, sales driven post, oftentimes we will swipe on by. So just little tips and tricks for capturing attention in the first three seconds. Oftentimes, if you are happy to have you know, face to camera, that works really well because people will gravitate towards faces. People who have themselves in a video, statistically speaking, Meta's put out some information where 
27% of, or there's a 27% increase in conversions from videos that feature people and faces. Like we just gravitate to that a little bit more. Um, other tri tips and tricks is just to be a little bit creative with your phone. So if we go back to that, you know, uh, six second video of the food on the table, starting in close to a particular item, then moving back like that, or swiping from you know, one direction to the other. It's just some form of movement at the start, which is a little bit different, a little bit uh, eye-catching. That's all that needs to be. So it doesn't have to be some crazy transition, but just little bits of movement, or you know, you're talking to the camera and then you switch it around, just little things like that. Keep your brand or product visible. Obviously for you know, any business-related content, that's important as well. And uh, integrate a clear CTA into your video, so a call to action. So again, with business content, if we have, um, you know, if we're trying to offer somebody something, if we're trying to provide them some value, if we're trying to get them to take some form of action, we need that little call to action at the end. So whether that's, um, you know, heading to the website, whether that's to read the caption in the post, whether that's to click the link in your bio, whether that's to give you a call, whatever that call to action is, um, make sure we include that at the end of the video or in the video itself as well, so that the person who's consuming that content then sort of knows what the next step is. Right, so we just help them to take that next step. And to summarize, um, consistency is key. So as I mentioned before, the, it, it's much more important to be consistent rather than should I be posting three times a day or should I be posting on six different platforms in one go? Being consistent is the most important metric. Prioritize short form video. So again, six seconds through to however long the video needs to be. And again, the best rule of thumb there is the video needs to be as long as it needs to be for you to get the point across. So it's not about oh, every video that I create needs to be 60 seconds. However long it takes for you to get that point across is as long as the video needs to be. Right. Creating some content that educates, entertains, and or provides some value. Again, at the end of the day, the best way to look at that is just do you. Like you, you run your business, you are successful, people love what you have to offer. So show them that, provide context around that, and try not to overthink it. It's more important, obviously, to get something posted than to not post at all. So that's the best rule of thumb. 80% value-driven content, 20% sales-driven content. Again, just use that as a bit of a metric. It's not a hard and fast rule, but just try that and see how it goes. Include a call to action with our content, especially with the sales-driven posts. So if you have something that you want people to take action on, make sure that you let them know what sort of action they need to take. And be social. So reply to comments uh, and leave comments on other people's content. It's something that we see a lot in you know, the agency space is that businesses will be posting content or we're helping businesses post their content or run advertising. But then when people do engage, no one replies. Um, and I can't stress enough the impact, and I'm sure everybody's had it before, where you message a brand, you, you leave a comment on a post. If they reply back to you, it's, it's refreshing. Like there's a little bit of validation that it's like, oh, they actually got my message. They took the time to reply. Like that can't be uh, overstated enough, the impact that that can have on uh, you know, just taking those few moments, whether it's delegated to somebody inside the business, whether you do it at night, whatever it is, but just replying to those comments can have a really big impact. And then likewise, leaving comments on other people's social media as well. So whether it's uh, similar companies in you know, the same industry that you're in, or whether it's just other people's social media, but leaving comments and little trails around social media with your, your business's social media accounts is just more touch points. More people see your brand. If you're leaving a little piece of value or replying to somebody's comment, it just, you're being social and the algorithm will reward you for that because you're not just uh, posting and ghosting as we call it. If we put up a post and then we just put down our phone or close the computer and walk away, uh, the algorithm knows that you've posted and then you've just left. You've left the platform. So being social as well, replying to some comments and just giving it you know five minutes, whatever it is, to spend a little bit of time on the platform, the algorithm will know that and they'll reward you for that. You'll get a little bit of extra bang for your buck. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, uh, there was uh, something of value in there for you. And if you've got any questions, let's, uh, let's throw to some questions. Yes? Um, well, I was thinking about... Mm -hmm. Tell the other question, where's Twitter? 
Yeah, good question. Uh, live videos, for sure. It's um, the emphasis, live video again, two, three years ago was all of the rage. Still very, um, very powerful, very beneficial to the business. It's, it's just a little bit different in that if you're going live, it can take some time for people to see that you've gone live and jump on. And by then you've been talking for two or three minutes and you've said what you have to say and you end the video. So sometimes we need to have a little bit of structure around when we are going live and or if you're going live for an extended period of time, whether it's 10, 15 minutes, but allowing time for people to actually hop on and start to listen to what you have to say. The benefit of, you know, if you're only going to go live for one or two minutes or a really short period of time, generally speaking, it's better to just create a video or a reel and publish that because that will be, you know, people will see that and be able to engage with that like they normally do. Where, because the whole purpose of going live obviously is to try and get some interaction or you know be in real time. Um, but if it's a really really short period of time, generally speaking, you're not going to get a lot of people on there. So it's just yeah, it's a different use case. If you were if you had an event like this, for example, like if we had a live stream going the whole time for that half hour period, that's great. People can tune in. There's time for them to comment, all that sort of stuff. If you're doing it for one or two minutes, it's going to be really hard to get any kind of engagement because it's just not enough time. Does that help? And with Twitter. Twitter is not as big in Australia as it is in other parts of the world, but it's very big in certain industries and niches. So in the education space, um, is Twitter sort of bigger in your industry as well? Yeah, it's, it's different industries um, and different use cases. Obviously, people use it a lot for like news, keeping up with current affairs, that sort of thing. Um, it's, yeah, different industries. Farming and agriculture, is, it's big with, and also teaching and education. They're the two sort of industries that we know use Twitter a lot. Um, yeah, but again, it just sort of depends. Um, we don't do a lot with Twitter these days because most of the organizations and the brands that we work with, it's very much sort of Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, maybe a little bit of Pinterest, um, but yeah, hopefully that helps. We do, yeah, so uh, attention, we specialize in five core areas, obviously digital strategy, social media management, the organic side of things, paid advertising, Facebook, Google, uh, then email marketing and website design and development. So anything in that space um, is where we specialize. We don't do SEO, um, there's not a lot else in the digital space that we don't do, um, but anything with social media, paid advertising and websites, yes. Yep. Perfect. How important do you think Google reviews are at the moment? Google reviews uh, account for 10% of your organic search result. So or the, the weight of your organic search result. So the more Google reviews you have, the more likely that you are going to have a higher organic search result um, up to sort of 10%. It's a 10% weight. Obviously your website speed, user experience, all that sort of stuff comes into play as well. But Google reviews and a really optimized Google My Business profile does carry a lot of weight. So again, it's like anything, if it's, if it's active, if you're getting new reviews constantly, if you're putting some posts onto your Google My Business profile, which you can do, um, anything that's current, new, fresh, and being used is going to tell the algorithm that, hey, there's activity here, people are engaging with it, and if it suits their search query, you'll get a better, uh, better result on Google. You can, like Facebook's obviously got its own review system, um, but inside of your Google My Business profile, you can get a link. There's just a link, which we use it all the time. You can put in an email to somebody or you could post that over onto Facebook and somebody can tap on that and leave a Google review as well. Do we have any more, any final questions for Anthony? That's great. Before we wrap it up. If you think of anything later on, obviously the socials are all there. Please feel just send us a DM, send us a question, send us an email, whatever it is, always happy to help.